got a couple of minutes to approve, I think. Maybe, um, not to give any know for sure, but we got the November 25th meeting minutes, December 2nd meeting minutes to approve. Sounds good. Is everyone good with those with those minutes? Yes. Which ones are they? The 18th, the 25th, and the second. Yeah, I signed the 25th. Oh, I didn't sign it. I'll say yay. I'll say yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So those those are approved. Yeah, we are. We're going to jump on down the agenda to uh, uh, passive. Uh, passing when we have a couple people from the league here. Yes. Larry and Pam, I understand. Yes. No worries. So you want to step up a little closer if you want. Um, sure. And uh, move heads back. You may have these in your packet, but I'll uh, I'm going to hand these out just because. Put together for you. What's that? You can have the two. It works out well. So, good evening. Um, thank you the opportunity to present the renewal proposal to you tonight. I'm Pam Fecto. I'm an underwriter at the League, and with me is Larry Smith, um, Member Relations Manager. I don't know how long you've been on the select board or how familiar you are with what we call, what you'll hear us say passive, passive. And so it stands for Property and Casualty Intermunicipal Fund. And um, it's a self-insured, nonprofit, um, intermunicipal insurance association that was formed back in the 80s because commercial insurers thought you were a bad risk. And so they came to the league and PASSIF was formed. Um, Heartland is actually a charter member of PASSIF. We've been a member since 1987. So we value that partnership. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Well, so every year, a portion of the fund surplus, if there's excess funds in certain years that get closed out, go back to the members in the form of a contribution credit, and much like a co-op or a credit union where the money goes back to the members. And this year, to date, I think we've 22 million has gone back to the members. And you'll notice on your um, page that shows what your contribution is. It's page one. That it's page one, but you have to get to like you have to move about four pages to <laughs> to get there. Um, so this year, you got a contribution credit of eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars that came off of the um, the total funds. So we're governed by a board of directors made up of municipal officials, just like yourself, and we only cover municipal entities. We don't cover the grocery store across the street, or you know. So we know municipalities, and we know what you do, and. Um, so we've also, there's a lot of information in this that we're not going to go over and you may have specific questions. There's a stewardship, so the bottom line is your contribution for, we, instead of premium we call it contribution, for 2020. And the numbers are actually down a bit from last year, I think 10% on the property and casualty side and I think it's 13% on the workers comp side. We had um, a little revision <coughs> to the underwriting rating system and you have uh, had good experience, you have a really good workers comp mod and so that's obviously helpful here. So there's a stewardship report uh, that's in here and Larry's gonna talk about that. It's some of the programs that we've offered the town over the past year and some of what's available to you for being a passive member. 
Yeah, so um, as Pam was saying, so again, we're a member-owned organization uh, governed by our, our board of director, board of directors, which is uh, all municipal officials. So every year, you know, they look at uh, nationally where they where they are seeing trends um, and try to put programs in place to try to help our members prevent those trends from happening, at least here in Vermont. So we've added two programs uh, this past year. So back in November, we added um, an HR consultant, uh, Jill Muir. Uh, Jill Muir specifically is there for passive members like yourself. And whenever you have HR related questions or maybe you have a, a policy that you're trying to update or you know personnel policy and you wanna add some of the um, updated language. Uh, the legislation always changes things throughout the throughout the year, so we want to make sure that some of that language gets added to your personnel policy. So Jill's there to try to help you with that. Uh, you have taken, you took advantage um, this past year of Jill's services, um, and I want to say uh, she helped specifically with. Um, uh, a model policy on, uh, I think it was sexual harassment, and uh, then there was something to do with, you might have had um, an, a part-time employee that you were adding to a full-time employee, or part-time employee and adding a full-time position, and you wanted to see the proper process of doing that and talk to Jill regarding that as well. But Jill is available, um, so she also oversees our EPL assistance program. EPL stands for Employee Practices Liability. So if you're ever as a board or um, as a town in a situation where maybe you have to reprimand or uh, unfortunately maybe you have to terminate somebody, but you want to do it the right way, you, can, you would call Jill first. Uh, Jill's there as a resource. Uh, she would um, direct you. We have five attorneys around the state. And she would direct you to one of those attorneys where you can get um, three free hours of legal advice on how to properly do it. So uh, it's it's been a program that we've had in place for, I want to say it's going on three years now, uh, just because we were starting to see a trend in that area. Um, so it's well worth us paying uh, the, the attorney fees to make sure that the municipalities are getting the right advice and doing it the right way. So that's a popular program that we've added this year, um, and that's uh, Jill oversees that. And then you have, um, you have Wade Mashore. Mick Wade is uh, one of your loss control, or is, is your loss control rep. He's um, provided some services here in town as well. Mm -hmm. And then we also have another new service. Uh, we have a law enforcement consultant. So we uh, hired Trevor <coughs> Whipple, who was a former chief in the city of South Burlington. Uh, Trevor, Trevor uh, was a chief in the city of Barrie for many years and then moved to city of South Burlington and put some time in there as well and then retired uh, and when he retired we picked him up as a law, enfor law enforcement consultant so he works with municipalities specifically um, law enforcement departments or animal control if you have an ordinance that you're trying to pass or want him to take a have a second set of eyes on he can do that for you um, so he's available as well to our municipalities so those are two areas that we added was HR and law enforcement consultant. And then uh, um, a Wade's always been your loss control consultant. That's something we've always done. Okay, just, um, I wasn't ready for this in-depth discussion tonight. So oh, sure. Are you talking VLCT or VLCT or are you talking the insurance group? So, um, great question. Uh, yeah. the, we're, we are the LCT employees, but right. we work specifically for the risk management services, which is part of the insurance group. Okay, and the people you've added, the HR and the municipal yeah. resource, what side of the house are they on? They are uh, on the risk management services, so the insurance okay. portion, yeah, specifically. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I should have I should have mentioned that right up front. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then you've also taken advantage. We offer a, a passive, we call it passive online university. So it's some <coughs> online classes or courses that are out there on our website, um, and you've taken advantage of that as well this year. What are those? Um, what are they? What, yeah, are they for, who are they for, I should say? They're for any municipal official. Um, there's some administrative classes out there. There's classes for water and sewer operators. There's 
classes for uh, public works. Um, so there's classes for all different categories and then there's mostly they're all municipal type classes. Um, you know, online courses, uh, basically you would uh, watch maybe an online video or uh, some type of online presentation and then at the end there might be a quick quick quiz and then you can get a certificate to, a certificate for completing the and class. And is there a fee associated with those? No, those are all included as being a passive member. Everything that I'm talking about is all included. There's no additional cost for that. Oh, and then, um, can, you want me to talk about the grants and scholarships now or wait? Um, we can see if they have questions and we can talk about the grant and scholarship program, however they want to do it. Yeah. Do you have so, any specific questions for us? Well, have we ever seen, I don't recall ever seeing one of these before. One of these presentations? Yeah, one um, of these reports. So. This is fairly new that, it is. that we put together. Um, if. <coughs> members are going, uh, I think there was a point where you were going to get entertaining quotes from other okay, carriers. Okay, that's what I was wondering, if this was in response to that. And yeah. so a lot of times some of our members, just upon renewal, will go out and just give an overview to the select board about, sometimes board boards change, they're not familiar with what we have yeah. and what we offer. So sometimes we'll just talk about what their renewal is going to be and what they've taken advantage of and things that are new, new programs that we have. So it is fairly new. We have um, communication, our communications department put it together and they did a nice job. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. So. I'm just, I, I was just wondering if, if VLCT and Passive are making the point that if towns start going to, is it Hickok and Boardman or whoever they are, uh, this will weaken, your, I would think, your organizations. And is that a concern or no? Mm. It's, I think um, the leadership team and the board looks at a lot of that information. And if so, you know, certain members left or if larger members left, what would that do to the trust? And yeah. there's uh, planning. They, they don't just, you know, it's not just reactionary or there's certain things that they look at with the actuaries if this, you know, this member left or this, what would, mm -hmm. you know, what would happen? We would, um, we always hope that we keep all of our members and have 100% retention. We've done pretty good this renewal with that. And uh -huh. right, we're still there at 100% retention. Uh -huh. It's a member organization. It's owned by you and it was started by municipalities. And so we would hope that they would continue to support why, you know, why we're there. And it's, um, there's a lot of programs that are offered that are just we don't, like I said, we don't insure the grocery store down the road or the, you know, auto dealership. It's definitely tailored for, for you. Yeah, you'll see that all of our, all of our trainings, all of our services that we offer to you, uh, I want to say 99% of them is all included in the cost, mm -hmm. and they're tailored for municipalities. So it's really geared toward trying to reduce risk or reduce mm -hmm. claims. So they're all um, risk-based type trainings. Uh, that Wade puts on or that you know the HR program that Jill might be able to do or Trevor might be able to do um, but the actual presentation that we have here we've kind of I would say over the years we we've, we've improved upon it to try to make it so that it uh, really shows the services that we do provide so that you can take advantage of it so because there's a lot of services that we do provide we want to make sure our members are are well aware of what those are because it's really, I mean, it's your trust. It's, uh, you know, we kind of work for, we work for all the municipalities that participate in this. And I have to tell you, that we, we've had a few members that left um, and that are coming back this year. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So do, do you have any affiliation with any big insurance company in any way? What happens with us are is you insured, we, in is we have a self-insured retention up to 500000 and then we buy reinsurance over those amounts for property and general liability, um, boiler and machinery. So I was just noticing the, uh, the liability coverage of $10 million. $10 million. I'm thinking if you had a claim, that might be pretty serious. Yeah. Well, it is, you know, there's a reason that, the, that it is in the amount of 10 millions. It used to be, the limits used to be lower, but we found that, you know, there can be, uh, municipalities yeah. can have a claim that, that goes to that 
that level. There was one, one of our members experienced one um, this year. And so it's unfortunate we live in that kind of a society, mm -hmm. but um, the so limits are necessary. So you my question. You're you are insured. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. You are insured. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but yes. We so protect, we protect yes. the, the finances, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Great question. So if you want to continue with yours, and then I can wrap it up with the grants and scholarships. I don't, I don't okay. So um, we also offer uh, two programs. Um, we, we offer what's referred to as a passive grant. Uh, so it's a 50 50 match for safety related type equipment. So Wade may come out and do an inspection of your buildings. He may make recommendations of things that you might want to do, maybe in the town barge, for example. Uh, and you can use that grant program to purchase that and we'll pay 50% of it up to $5,000 and then you pay 50% of it. <coughs> so it is a program that's been available uh, for the past uh, probably four years. Uh, very popular program few changes this year. So in the past, we used there used to be two times you could apply. Uh, April 1st was the first deadline, so you would apply by then. And then the next deadline would be, uh, I think it's the end of August, uh, to, to apply for that grant. Usually in the past, um, they set aside about $200,000 for this grant program. And most of the money goes uh, in the first phase by April 1st. Most of the municipalities are well aware that it's out there and, it, and, it, and it's gone by April 1st. And there's a little bit left at the end. This year, it's gonna be a rolling application. So you have, you know, throughout the year to apply. I still recommend to apply early if you can, but it may give you a better um, opportunity to, to, to look at what you might need and work it around your budget. Because again, it's a 50-50 match. You pay 50 and we pay 50. So that's the um, passive grant program, again, 50-50 up to $5,000. The other program <coughs> is a scholarship program. So if you wanted to send somebody away for training or even have somebody in-house come here and do a training. If you want to send somebody away for training, we'll pay up to $500 to do that, uh, safety-related type training. Um, that could include you know, the cost of the course and, and maybe an overnight stay. Uh, but we'll pay up to $500 for that. If you wanted to bring somebody in-house uh, to do a presentation or a type of training, we'll pay up to $2,500 for that. So uh, again, that's another popular program. I think we added a little bit more money to that because we went through all of the money for the past two years. So the, the, the grant program, we put it, set aside $200,000. The scholarship program, we set aside $30,000 for next year. So. Um, popular program, so uh, I highly recommend if you haven't taken advantage of it, to take advantage of it. It can help you stretch your budget a little bit if there's something that you're already planning on. Right. Purchase. Like what if people use the, uh, what kind of training, is that for rescue or? The, the scholarship program? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could, uh, you could send maybe somebody from your highway department uh, away to a safety type training or and a couple of in-house things I've seen is, um, oh, there's a, there's a class called um, Game of Logging. So it's a gentleman that actually comes and he'll, he'll teach uh, proper techniques for basically cutting trees. Uh, but there's, um, a, there's some safety pieces to it, and uh, that's a kind of an expensive course, but you have to have a minimum of at least eight people signed up. You can invite surrounding towns that are passive members to bring in to, to get that, uh, that eight. Um, and that 2,500 pretty much pays for that, that course, and it's a really good course, I've heard. Does that mean they come to us? Oh, I mean, somewhere locally. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you would. Uh, I think you have to set aside a, a, a spot, so mm. have some woods that they can use to to cut, and then um, yeah, they can come locally and do the training. Well, we have lots of trees. Yeah, it's hands on. Or, um, they just did one. Two of our guys went to it. Um, really? Yeah, it was in, I want to say West Windsor or something yeah. like that. It's close by, anyways. It's a, it's a really good. Uh, Do they cut ash trees? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure um, if you 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 got to designate the trees. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. How about the other thing I'm interested in? The 50/50. What is what's that been used for by different towns? Um, I've seen eyewash stations. I've oh. seen. Um, 
A lot of stuff in the town security systems. I've seen that. If you don't have a security system, maybe you want to add one. Um, I've seen. I've seen um, that. I've seen uh, dump locks. Um, Let's see, a, a lot of stuff in the highway garages that could benefit them so that, you know, maybe they're not having to do lifting or um, I've seen chaps, I've seen, uh, pr you know, protection for um, using a chainsaw, the, the helmet yeah. and the ear. Hmm. So There's, and if you have a, a question, if something is, if something qualifies, it's, a, it's one of the easiest <coughs> grants yeah. to get is, and you can always call. Um, Adam, our administrative person in, um, in loss control, and say, what about this? So that you know ahead of time, would this qualify? Uh, okay. yeah, it's, a one, it's like a one-page application, and if you go on our website, under, um, uh, and you can probably put in grants, passive grants, it'll actually bring up a form, and there's a list of things, sample things that, are, um, that municipalities have used it for. Well, that's good. It's yeah. good to know because it could be something that you were thinking that you were yeah. going to do anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah it could be great. some ergonomic stuff in there yeah. that you could use it for. Um, there's a lot. There is a list there that some of the most popular items that our municipalities have used it for. Sure. So, any other questions regarding the grants or scholarships? So the booklet that we've put together here, I mean, we could go through this, you know, page by page, I'm but sure I think we have some other things on your um, agenda. <laughs> yeah, we hit on some of the highlights, which really is uh, some of the trainings that we offer, as well as the grant scholarships that you do have a team um, that that's available for you. Um, there's a lot of great resources. Well, there are a, great, a lot of great resources. There. I didn't know you had all these. Yeah. This is really good. Very, yeah, it's a nice package. It's a really, yeah, yeah, really well done. And I, and I was wondering about the Hickok Gorman thing. And, yeah. we, it's been interesting because, I mean, they're, they're out there and they've been um, going to certain municipal municipalities and in some cases they haven't even been able to produce a quote for some number. In other cases, um, they have, but sometimes needed extra time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we have um, we have one of our members, Milton, is coming back. They left um, two years ago. They're coming back this year. I'm really glad that they're coming back. They wanted the resources that were available mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's, it's impressive. Are we reviewing the coverage we have on certain uh, pieces of equipment and reducing them as they get older or maybe not having any coverage? Um, um, we look at, we looked at certain things like um, the coverage for the books in the library and a couple other things. Um, I don't think we've reduced um, any of the municipal vehicles certainly down below I mean just due to the to the liability involved and how much we use them so we pretty went on the vehicles themselves that they stay fairly fairly steady on that you can look at you can look at if you've got an older vehicle that you don't think is I worth mean, a lot you can a take your old pickup that's you can take physical um, you can take physical damage off it and leave the liability and anytime you want to look at that if you we can give you the prop the vehicle list and we can tell you what if there would be a substantial savings or what the savings would be so a lot of times municipalities sometimes don't always have sometimes they have some older things but a lot of times replace the things with some newer equipment so but every once in a while you got that old one that that you're hanging on to <laughs> one, one line says new required probably 90 days to put this up. if you get something new if you purchase something and you don't tell us like, still covered for 90 yes. days <laughs> okay that's what i'm told <laughs> okay. could you i'm still sitting here on the fence confused yeah. about i i'm familiar with the vlct side and a yeah. lot of the services you mentioned come 
come there as well, not the grants or the passive grants. Yeah. So maybe could you, as you wrap up, could you give me three reasons why we should stay with you? So we have, yeah. let me just see if I can help make it a little clear. So there's the LCT. Right. And what happened back in 1987 was members came to the LCT because of the they, insurance because, because yeah, they needed insurance. That. And that's when PASIF was formed. Okay. So there's a, we have a couple of trusts. We have um, the Unemployment Trust and the Property and Casualty and Workers' Comp mm -hmm. Trust. So they're the insurance arm of the LCT. Right. And um, there's still the Municipal Assistance Center right. through VLCT, which is not part of right. PASSIT. Right. So if we didn't go with you, a lot of the services that you threw out there would still be available to us. Mm, they would not. No. So the, the uh, so I mean, it's a great question, but the HR consultant, that is only available to yeah. PASSIT members. And the, sold me on that one. and the law enforcement okay. consultant that's only available to passive yeah, members sold me on that one either. yeah the only thing that you would um you would continue getting if you were to left leave passive you would get the uh, the vlct side of it which is a municipal assistance right. center um and then you have the advocacy that goes to the uh, the legislation on your behalf and um, uh, advocates for different laws uh, unfunded mandates stuff sure. like that sure. Um, but I would say, as far as uh, the passive pro, if you were to leave passive, there's, I mean, we are you, so it's a member owned organization. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> we were created for a reason, and that's because the, the commercial carriers kind of left the, they, they didn't want to insure municipalities back when the market became hard. I would say, would that, can that happen again? Absolutely. If we didn't exist, then that would really leave municipalities in a tough situation to try to, try to find insurance. So okay. we try to keep it reasonable. We understand that all municipalities have a, has a, ha, have a budget to work, work with, mm -hmm. and we try to keep our costs as low as possible. We don't, we don't work on commission. Um, everything that that we do like if we if we make extra money we obviously obviously have to have a reserve we are um, uh, we are uh, audited by the Department of Banking and Insurance they do come in and audit our books and make sure that all of our uh, everything's filed with them and all of that mm -hmm. but um, <clears throat> we have to have some money aside in case the the fund were for some odd reason were were to to leave or close close the doors that we would have enough there to pay for our members uh, for the claims that are still in the books. But uh, all the money every year we look at and give back to our members in form of uh, contribution credit. So I'd say over the past two years, last year and this year, we've given back a record of a, a million and a half. Last year we gave back to members and again this year based on, um, you know, financially we're in great shape. So uh, we were able to do that in a commercial market that's that would not happen in a commercial market you know if they make money on you then great it goes to the uh to the board to work to the stockholders yeah yeah our focus is um, a lot on risk management trying to make you mm -hmm. you know make the workplace safer for your mm -hmm. employees and for uh, the people that work here and so programs that we have are developed to focus on that so mm -hmm. that your employees stay on the job and they're not out on workers comp and we do have our own workers comp adjusters, our own claims adjusters in-house uh, that handle the claims and it's not, their focus isn't to deny things, it's we try to find coverage mm -hmm. for um, yeah. where it is. It's not some place that you're dealing with that's out of state. We know Vermont and we know Vermont municipalities. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. It goes in that direction, so thank you. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned the contribution. Yeah, I don't know what the number was. I'm sure it's in the literature. I don't know if you could tell us. The it's for the year? 7,000? Yeah. So, contribution credit for the issue. Oh, the contribution credit. 82, yes. sorry. Uh, the total is 76. Thousand change, and the credit was over eight eight thousand plus. Yeah. Any other questions? What was her cost last year? 
the overall cost last year. Yeah. Do you know what the cost was? Yeah. You know what? That's no, it was a little bit. It was a little bit higher than that seventy six. Um, get down to twelve. Yeah. So I'm, I want to say it was eighty ish, eighty four, eighty eight. Yeah, eighty eighty eight. I think. Yeah. It came down. I think uh, Martin and I looked at it. Came down about twelve thousand. That sounds about okay. right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> was it up because of claims, or and then it came back down? Or? No, there was a. Um, I think the contribution credit might be might have been a little less, but um, with the actuaries and the board, mm -hmm. we did a revamp of our underwriting rating structure. Um, so it was done by our uh, deputy de director of uh, loss control and underwriting. <coughs> kind of looked at a way of. It used to be we didn't have a lot of ways to reward members with good experience and members that had the bad experience. You've had good experience. It shows in this, you know, reduction for this okay. year. So it's a way of going forward with um, with making that work. So. Okay. So we are we are up with individually then. As Yes, you're in a pool, yeah. but, but you have your you do have your own experience. That's right. So if we had a bad year, we could consider the, you know, a lot of claims. It would cost us. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you go turn to page five where it says workers' compensation. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> um, it gives you an experience modification. So that tells you <coughs> roughly a one would be where you would start at. Yeah. If you're lower than a one, then you have good experience, meaning that um, you haven't, I'll say you haven't had a lot of claims. And if you're higher than a one, um, you're yeah. paying for those. Someone those was telling sales. us about this before, uh, and that's averaged out over a period of years, like three years or something, yep. is you that right? We look at claims for, for three, years. three years. Yeah. So you can see what yours is at, and you're at uh, point eight. Whenever it's under one, it's good because it means yeah. you're paying less. Whenever it's over one, you're paying a percentage that's more. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost dollar for do dollar over one. So if you're paying for it, it can. You don't want to be above one. So you're you're good. And that's the reason for taking the safety courses. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good point. It's a good reason for taking advantage of, of Wade for having some good um, good policy, good return to work good policy stuff like that. Yeah. Anyone else have any other uh, questions? Why don't you start selling some stable health insurance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, so a group your size, so you have less than less than 100 employees here. So really, the only place for you to purchase health insurance is through the Vermont Health Connect. So um, you have two choices. There's MVP and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So we used to years ago be a pool. Um, we when the when the Affordable Care Act came in place back in 2012, that really the pool dissolved and members that were smaller like yourself um, could purchase insurance through the Vermont Health Connect. So um, I don't have a great answer for you there because there's there's not a yeah. lot of there's not a lot of options out there for you specifically for a group on, on your size. I mean like I said there's Blue Cross and there's MVP. Um, MVP is a little bit lower than uh, as far as rates this year um, than Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So if you haven't looked in that direction that may be an option. We did that. Dave, Dave's all over I'm sorry. it. A, I'm sure he is. I, I know. And, I've worked with Dave. Yeah, and Larry's been to insurance. a number of meetings um, on in the past, so yeah. I'm sure he, he health insurance. Uh, he knows it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we made the switch. Yeah. Let's see how long that lasts. I wish I had some better news for you on that front, but I, I really don't. There's not a lot of options here. I, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time and, and yeah. coming down here because this is really, really good. It's really informative. And yeah. Thank you. We I appreciate, appreciate you letting us come to your select board meeting and talk about it. That's great. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say ever in the future, if you ever have any questions or if you um, just want to see us come and, and give you a presentation. Dave knows where to find it. You know how to get it. <laughs>
I've been in the most obscure, I, I say this every time, but I've been in like the most obscure places in Vermont, and all of a sudden Larry just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what are you doing? Oh, a small little town around the corner. <laughs> Should we be a little worried about that statement? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just, I'm, Dave's there I'm too. He'll so. yeah. 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 pop in and see if you need him. So, it's never oh. been an issue. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, I really appreciate sure. it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a cookie. Yeah, take a cookie. Oh, oh, do you want us to move our chair back? Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you. You um, need the cookies. <laughs> do you need an extra? One of these? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I can take those apart if you want to leave those. Yeah. Yeah, just leave it too. You don't mind, do. brother? I thought somebody else gave them to Okay. I'm just saying there is some Okay. Well, I think okay. Some okay. 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 It's still a good product. Could have been fresh. Yeah. The main thing is not some corporation walking away with that money. That's true. They may not, they may not be sufficient. If they have some money, they get it. So. You said for tax reasons? Tax reasons? You know, are they some sort of, they must be. Yes, I think they said that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, Didn't they say nonprofit? They're essentially a municipal. They're, mem they're made up of yeah, municipalities. They're basically us. Yeah. Run by a group of you know, select board members or town managers or yeah. mayors. And all that said, yeah. so, so, Dave, our rates are lower this year? They are, yes. Coincidentally, since we went to the street to ask for other rates? Being a little cynical here. Wow! But, uh, yeah, you are. Oh, I, this is, and this costs money, and they show up here. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm glad we're looking around. They're trying hard. So, They're trying hard, yeah. yeah. I, I put the little sheet in your packet that basically went out to everybody, and that's what they did kind of, okay. you know, right. industry wide for the municipalities, but yeah. certainly. Um, when I notified them that we were had been contacted by Hitchcock and Mormon, they, they certainly perked up. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're paying attention anyway. So. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Uh, so I did. Yep. I was, I was going to say insurance is a massive business. Yeah. And Vermont is a tiny state, <coughs> and they just cover municipalities. Yeah. So it's really, yeah. it's got to be a minuscule thing, yeah. rel relative. Yep. Well, totally. yep. uh, and, uh, and again, I'm just surprised that we got the uh, reduction in the rate and the presentation. So I did put that out to you when I put the packet out there that Hickok and Borman did actually, did, as she said, did not put in a proposal yeah. at the end of the day due to they felt as though uh, it wasn't going to be competitive, and they, I, I need to give her a call back, but um, one of the things that she said was flood insurance um, for our two buildings, um, fire and, and the highway garage was mm -hmm. an issue, so. Okay. Uh, Phil, do you want to bring up what you were? Uh, I can very quickly. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I've learned that uh, <coughs> A number of towns are creating a new chapter in their town plan. Um, it's often called a, a health chapter. It, it has had various names. Um, and I found myself thinking that with Heartland Cares and the Municipal Resource Working Group, that um, a lot of energy has been put in by individuals in town on the, the subject of health and, and um, well-being. Um, so if 
my colleagues permit, I'll explore it a little bit more and then come back to you in the weeks ahead to, to with a, maybe a suggestion that we have the Planning Commission explore such a chapter in our town plan. I realize they're going to be busy with the enhanced energy um, <clears throat> report that they just got for that chapter, but um, just something we might consider on the horizon. Have you talked to them about this? I haven't talked to anybody. Yeah. Our guys are the first ones to talk about it. I just got some materials. Okay. So, so that's all I really wanted to do is just throw it out there and then have a discussion at a later time. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Dave, you got um, says it, adjustments to agenda. Do you have something else? Mm -hmm. Sticking at this point? For adjustments, no. No. Okay. Good. See, looks at the audience. Do you, does someone in the public have anything to bring up at this point? No, not this time. Here, observe. Okay, good. We're learning. Huh. So, uh, let's skip the budget. Let's save that for a bit later. Okay. Yep. Tell us about the steps. Okay. Uh, so, a couple weeks ago, I brought to you, um, or spoke to you, or came to you about the front steps of the Recreation Center. Um, we talked about the price tag at that point, $25,000. Um, the, um, I, I believe that uh, the, the conversation led to looking into the Damon Hall steps and seeing if, um, you know, from an overall perspective, you know, a little bit of a larger project that, you know, what that does for the overall cost, the cost or, you know, does that factor in? And <clears throat> I did have a very good conversation with um, Dave Joslin, did come, we looked at the steps. He gave a price um, tag of Damon Hall of $10,000 for both steps um, to rehab those steps. So it'll be $35,000 for these steps and the recreation steps. Um, he kept essentially his estimate for the steps the same um, and basically factored in mobilization you know, or lack thereof for this part of the project here. Um, so that, so essentially I'm coming back to you with what um, <coughs> From that discussion, looking into it, and I'm coming back to you with the price tag of essentially ten thousand uh, dollars. At this point, my recommendation would be to go forward um, with Dave Jocelyn uh, at the thirty-five thousand dollars for both the front steps of the recreation center and Damon Hall. Um, I'd point out that I've now been working on this for two and a half years. Um, it was one of the very first things that I did um, when I arrived. Um, and it has been, I think it was three years before that, that we got a um, estimate from uh, a mason, a local mason, to essentially put stucco and, and bluestone, I think, I um, can't remember the exact technical term, over the top. Which five years ago, that was at $5,000. Um, we didn't, um, I think as a group, um, we wanted to steer away from that. We didn't like the historical value. Um, I did do a historical assessment on the building. Uh, I did get a uh, engineer involved uh, to drop some specs and to look at it and determine, you know, how it should be done and if it was doable. It did go out to bid. Uh, we didn't get any responses on that bid. Um, although at a later point in time, we did get an interested party. Uh, the engineer strongly recommends him. Uh, and um, this would be our third person. We had, uh, again, the local person. We had um, another person in between um, decided to, who was actually kind of on board to do the job. Didn't have the appropriate insurance. Um, you know, the professionality was uh, a little bit suspect. Um, so at this point, um, I would point out that the price is not going down on this uh, as we progress. Um, but I do think that 
Um, if I certainly think that, um, particularly in the recreation center steps, I think the historic integrity uh, would be maintained, uh, and I think that um, you know it would be strengthened and um, you know would be durable for years to come based upon how we're going to do this. Uh, I have identified, uh, I didn't, so that puts us at 35. We've got about 20 um, in the budget for this. I haven't, didn't quite identify $15,000 extra, but I did identify 12, uh, 12,500 actually. So originally before we asked him to come back, we were kind of earmarked, um, or if we had preferred to go with him for the spring, um, that's a little bit up in the air at this point as to whether we could get him for the spring. Um, but certainly I think I would put it out there that um, you know we would prefer to do it in the spring. I think we've got enough money there to do it. And then if you can't do it in the spring, um, I certainly think that um, we would have money available in next year's budget to do it and we do it at that point. Um, we've identified a worker, we move forward and um, we try and put this to rest. Um, there is always the um, danger that, you know, once you start scraping back that cement, um, that it peels away like an onion and just keeps peeling. Um, although, talking with Dave Jocelyn and the engineer, they feel pretty good that um, they think they know where the, the solid portion is and that they can essentially rebuild off of that. Um, but if they if you can't, then it's going to be cost more than the twenty five. It um, it probably would yes. Yeah, we've had a pretty decent discussion on that. You know, again, it's not. You know, it's never. Yeah. It's never concrete, but you know, based upon their experience, they feel as though they feel pretty good that that's you know about the point that they would need to go back to and then build off of it. So what's in this year's budget for that project? So this packet, you have the budget, if you have your budget in there. Yeah. So in the, um, in the, it's in the capital projects portion of the budget. Uh, we had budgeted um, about $20,000 for this. Um, so then can we do two, like, I think we talked about this. So, yep. Both, so part of it in the spring and part of it in the summer after July 1, and then. So, very one, he's going to, if he's coming in April, he's going to go away. Oh, right, and right, right. Yeah, you have to come yeah. back. Yeah. And it would be very, very right. difficult to kind of time this. You to know. to so, span the both. So, in the budget, there is 8500 that um, I had identified that said, because we usually go over. And we've had, well, I want to call an overage here. So 8,500 that was identified to be used for overage and if we didn't use it to go into essentially a building reserve fund, um, a building reserve fund or an HVAC reserve fund. Um, in this case, I would say that it would be necessary to use it to finish the project. That's $8,500 there. We had about $3,100 that we, um, didn't use on the library and the Damon Hall roof. And then we have about another $1,000 um, wiggle room in uh, one, other, one other expense line item. Brings us to about 32.5. Um, so with some of the other things that you have going on here, um, you know, if this was the year to do it um, with the sale of the 21 house and not having to pay that, um, mortgage, I think that there's some room there. Um, certainly, you know, I don't think it's up to us to utilize, you know, thirty-five thousand dollars of that. But you know, thirty-five hundred and four, I think is, you know, but I think in and of itself, you know, like I said, I've identified through those three line items twelve thousand five hundred, which gets us to thirty-two five, um, which makes me comfortable enough to say, look, you know, we'll take you spring or we'll take you summer um you know let's try and make this work and let's let's move on at this point you need a motion 
Um, sure. Uh, I do feel it's important that we address the Damon Hall steps, um, and we've been talking about the rec center. Um, I, you know, I've looked at the rec center and I need something, so I would make a motion that we proceed with this latest estimate and uh, to deal with both Damon Hall and the rec center. I'll second it. You want to, should we include the name of the I am. the person and the amount or? Sure. Dave Jocelyn for $35,000. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. Miss more. What? Any more discussion? No. Oh. No, no, I agree. We went, we went. It's not going to get any cheaper. Right. And actually, he's. The Damon Hall steps are going to get worse if we don't do something. Yeah. So. It yeah. seems like he's giving us a discount on the project by making it bigger. Ten percent. Okay, I guess we're good to go then. So I believe I brought up to you in the past that with the bike fed program, um, we'd most likely be looking at um, bringing on a local, call it a local project manager. It's essentially more or less a requirement of the bike pet program. Uh, I have um, reached out to, had some discussions with the bike ped folks um, and had some discussions with the Two Rivers uh, Quichi Regional Commission folks. Uh, Two Rivers um, is interested in doing this. Um, they gave me, essentially, in order to kind of have this proceed, I need to pass on, it's kind of a formality, the resume and, and background of um, one of the Two Rivers folks, in this case, we um, it was Peter, I want to say Peter Sellers. Pete P P Fellows. Thank you, Pete P P Fellows, thank you very much. I haven't pulled Peter Sellers out in years. But anyway, um, Pete Fellows, uh, Rita Cito, um, who certainly is um, the ideal candidate, um, just came back from maternity leave, um, so her stuff was not available. So I believe it'll be, um, Pete Bellows and uh, in combination a bit with Rita. Uh, we do have money, um, there was $32,000, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, $32,000 put into the um, bike pet grant application for municipal project management. Uh, however, that 32 is based off of essentially the sidewalk construction piece of this. Um, so I have had some discussions with Pete, um, Peter Gregory, um, from Two Rivers, um, it would be kind of duplicative, if that's a word, um, to have, you know, since you're doing the sidewalk, you're essentially doing, you know, that the road is such so kind of ingrained into it that whoever do the municipal project management is probably going to end up doing um, a bulk of the municipal project management, whether it be part of the, the bike ped program or not. Um, so. Peter Gregory has indicated that they would do it for what they would in here for grant purposes. Um, you know, although there may be a non-grant expense there, um, but certainly I think that with the grant, there is room available to do that. And I'll just, um, so we need to have a municipal project manager anyways. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that Peter Fellows is who I would like to basically have the board support and we'll send that into the bike ped folks and that'll bring on a project manager for bike ped purposes but I certainly feel as though that will probably entail 
project management for a good portion of the project if, if that ends up going that way. Peter Gregory has indicated they're willing to do that for you know, the reimbursement of the grant. Um, but I certainly think that it's possible that there could be expenses in here for project management um, that would be on the town, uh, or certainly I would have that expectation personally. Um, however, I think that with the grant, um, there is room to do that. And it just makes sense that, you know, the two of us aren't calling a particular person to be there for the same reason, um, you know, is that, is that duplicative. So um, I would suspect that the project management will end up being for essentially for the project crossing over from just the sidewalk into the intersection, the asphalt portion of it, basically. Does that make sense? So this person would end up doing the managing the whole thing pretty but much it, but it would yes. be more it would be more uh, cost more than this 32 potentially Peter Gregory says nah, it would be for the grant reimbursement of the 32 really that was kind of my answer I would have an expectation that there would be a cost to us for some of that work um, I would suspect so I would just say I think we should expect a project management cost on the other portion of the project. Okay. I think that there is room there to do it based upon the grant that we received. Um, but just know that it would be very, di you know, the bike pad is asking us to have this position. It would be very difficult and even kind of silly in most instances that there's two people calling for almost the same reason, whether it be the construction engineer or for whatever <coughs> else. So it's, it, it is an administrative position. It create, you know, takes some things off of my plate. Um, however, there is still very much a design engineer and a construction engineer overseeing the project. Mm -hmm. So just to give you, but the liaison with the state, making sure that we abide by the, the grant and everything that we need to get the proper reimbursement and all that good stuff would be taken care of by the project manager. Okay, I, I understand. Um, the need for the engineering side and for the project management side. Uh, you mentioned that the bike pet grant, uh, that there was a need to review the candidate that we're putting forth. Um, you said send a resume along to do that. Um, is that. Does that same requirement fall on us from the state side for the intersections side of the project? So do we need to get? So the intersection side of the project is us. There is no state side on the on the other intersection. But the state is asking for oversight with the engineering. Pieces. The state is asking for oversight as to the design and for the construction engineering. Okay. So they simply want to make sure that the material is going up there and the design is up to their standards. Okay. That, that, great. You answered my question. Yeah. So um, I will in. I think this point hits home, and, and I can certainly share this experience because I've utilized bike ped grants in the past, and I think it kind of hits home here. Um, you would really have to make an argument to, to the state to not have the municipal project manager to get away without having one. You would have to make a real, you would really have to kind of make that argument. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the reason is, is that there is, they've got enough experience and uh, have been through this enough that when municipal managers are doing this, that they just get pulled in way too many different directions. Mm -hmm. And the project takes, it gets bogged down. And, and so taking that off and giving it to kind of a separate layer helps keep these things on track. And I can speak from experience, not only with this project, but with projects I have seen in St. Johnsbury and, and my hometown of Burke, that um, it certainly helped move them or keep them a little more focused. Okay. Um, still can get bogged down, but um, just yeah. kind of gets there. So I'm basically just kind of updating you, making sure that 
there's support here to move forward with this and that we're comfortable with Two Rivers and Pete Fellows and, and Rita Cito um, picking up that position. <coughs> so it would definitely be Pete or yep. it would be her, him then her? It would be, um, I, I have a feeling it would be a little bit of a con. Pete said it would be him. I believe that there'll be some overlap between um, the two. Yeah. So he would officially be the one. Yeah, he's the one. They, that was the resume that I got, but it was also the day after Rita got there. So, But um, that being said, it would be recognized that Pete is, you know, this is who we're sending the information to the state of Vermont. So it would be, you know, Pete would be tagged with it. And they were actually pretty, in my phone conversation with them, they were very comfortable with Two Rivers and had said that they had worked with them in the past and um, their projects with Two Rivers went pretty good, actually. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me, especially if they provide oversight on the larger project. So now I utilized Pete Fellows a little bit actually down when we originally got some of the preliminary estimates from the utilities, he was kind of involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to kind of help push that along a little quicker. Okay. So I have a question related to the intersection. Yep. I noticed a, a petition upstairs that says something to the effect of calling for a revote. What is up with that? Um, I haven't quite, although I have had frequent conversations with the individual responsible for that. So have I. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I haven't. <laughs> hey, stop me at Home Depot. <laughs> I haven't actually picked up the phone and spoken to Mr. Mamby about it. Um, actually, I haven't seen the um, signatures come in yet either um, for a full, you know, number. Um, I can't figure it out. I've had conversations with them. Um, when I read it, um, it it's already been voted on, which is what this asked for. So I'm at I, I'm at a loss. I, I'd have to I'd have to have a legal conversation. It's not for a revote. Kind of is. Sounds to me like it is. But it is a request to a request to vote on the project. So the fact that it's already been voted on, I'm a little, I'm, I would have to, I would need to seek municipal legal expertise as to what that would mean. Uh, Dave, <clears throat> I assume that you've been putting some thought into how we will word a warning article yep. that uh, is going to bring up the, the way it's financed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. And, well, I don't. I'm not asking you to <laughs> to tell me right now. I just I'm just saying. It it actually I did. It was like two years ago. <clears throat> it was just almost yeah. almost two years ago. It was one year <laughs> one year and ten months. One year and eleven months ago. It was in January. I think I presented actual language um, as to how that would work. Yeah. Well, I I'm just. Um, Concern that I mean, it's it's quite possible that the financing scheme that or you know, call it a scheme of the method that we might choose to uh, hope to have passed uh, would fail, and but that that mean but that leaves us with financing it the way we originally planned to do. Uh, but I think yep, yeah. yep, I haven't quite put pencil to paper, oh, but so that, my when I look at this in my head, based upon the bike ped grant, <laughs> I, I'm in, under the impression that <laughs> the need to borrow just for the existing <laughs> project, um, I'm not seeing the need as much as I was before, oh, of course not, no. because I think that, uh, or if at all, because under this, I think we've got the money for the construction engineer, which is a big question mark. Um, this is going to force us to go to a next, you know, we're going to need to detach from that VHB situation. It was like a $10,000 thing in there for an engineer. Um, it needs to be separate, so we're going to have to deal with that at some point. But I think that um, this, 
gives us breathing room to cover that and then some. Uh, so at the moment, I'm feeling as though for the underlying project, I think we're somewhat sufficient. Um, now, if the, the second part of this was that the board, uh, which is part of my town manager update, wanted to, I basically went back to the utilities and said, let's make sure this design is right. Let's send it back to the other four to five utilities and get the cost estimate. Um, that question still needs to go to the voters, I believe. So we're trying to get to the point where that language is in place. It would be a very similar question, whereas the vote would be, would you vote for this? And if that were to fail, the underlying project would stay. So you're really voting on, mm -hmm. you would be voting on essentially borrowing um, for the overall project, which would be a million dollar project at that point, um, minus the 275 for 260 for the grant, um, you know, that we didn't have before. Um, so we're looking at still a $750,000 project, $800,000 project that we would need to borrow for. It would need to be written in a way that if that were to fail, then the existing project stays. And are you, are you suggesting that if that failed, that we would not need to borrow money at all? Um, I, my <coughs> fear is not as high as it was that I very much thought that we did not have sufficient funds mm -hmm. um, to pay for this project, knowing that an engineer was going to be, say, $50,000 instead of ten. Um, and that essentially took up the entire four fifty five hundred thousand dollars, which I felt as though I'm to it was that. better to borrow to make sure that we had the sufficient funds, take that money and put it back into the fund and utilize it for the buildings and grounds and kind of stop the increases that we have had in kind of the buildings and grounds or at least use some of that or it's there to you know, right now we seem to be moving along at a halfway decent pace, but you know, it would not be hard for the wheels to fall off here somewhere. You know, any sufficient breakdown, and again, I got like the HVAC system in my head or something to that effect that would really make life a little bit uncomfortable. Um, you know, getting some money back into that capital projects fund or a buildings reserve fund would make me breathe a little bit easier and just give us a little bit more cushion than what we've had. I think that with the grant, um, I'm feeling better about things than certainly I was a year ago. That um, payback period was five years, yep. wasn't it? That's right. And would, would that first payment be this coming year? Uh, no. So a um, year, year, year after. Uh, so I don't, it's, I don't expect to see this project done this summer. So I suspect that if we, um, I was still hoping it was. I don't think it will. <laughs> Two things: one, if the utilities gets approved, well, that, would be um, that certainly would put us back. Um, it really depends on how quickly we can go back and do some of the things that some of the baseline stuff like you know we basically need to do a categorical exclusion um, which part of that has been kind of done you know, know historic um, uh, archaeology you know it was done not to the level of the FEMA NEPA um, it was done kind of at a wasn't quite as done and then we've discussed that as part of the application project um, with the bike tent folks. <coughs> uh, we told them what they had found. That was part of the state grant um, for the repaving of Queechy Road, but certainly is not part of the overall, you know, so there's things that we need to go back and kind of redo before we can go forward. Um, but the good thing here is that I think that the building blocks are certainly have been are being put in place, you know, with the municipal project manager, the grant, 
the easements, um, you know, again, a year ago, even as little as I think it was just this past spring um, that Matt Dunn signed and Billy Gosier signed their easements. Um, and we did have to go back to, I don't say Cartwright, but uh, Garth White. Garth White. <coughs> had to go back to him. So that is all in place. Um, you know, if the utilities go forward, there's a lot more to kind of go back and do um, to pull that forward. But I think as far as the intersection project goes, um, I think that some of these building blocks are starting to fall in place. Didn't you want us to go out to bond for this anyway? That was the conversation we just had, yes. It so be, It was before the grant, though. The grant said a pretty good lump sum of money. So that your idea for that is going away that we won't need to bond just to have that up. for the underlying project i'm feeling pretty comfortable with the grant money and where we're at we save quite a lot of money it just it's the principle of the thing and we were talking 10 years probably or more if it was a, a more significant if it, if it was a million dollars i'm not sure <coughs> 10 years would be long enough but but if we have got this reduced down to say 300,000, um, then we've got it for five years. But I, I thought you still wanted more fluidity or whatever, with cash yep. availability. Yep. I mean, so that's not, that would, is that, so, it's not a concern now. It never goes away. Um, I feel much better about it at this point in time. So before the grant, I don't believe we had enough money to do the project yeah. as it was, let alone we were trying to do buildings and grounds upkeep, which we still are. Yeah. So it, one, we were underfunded and we were pulling all our resources towards this project that could right. have been right, and still right, could right. be used for buildings and grounds projects. Yeah. With the grant money, and again, some of this needs to go towards engineering and project management, but you know, the after our 20% local share, it's $260,000, $270,000 of grant money for this project. Mm -hmm. So even if you take 70,000 of that and put it towards engineering and project management, leaving it with $200,000 to apply to this project, I feel whole lot better with that two hundred thousand dollars going sure. to this but, project but um staying with mary's thinking a little bit um this project is going to cost money we're talking about sidewalks you know which were not in the original budget the sidewalks to the library and uh, um, so it's not a it's not a gift of 200 toward the project there's a cost you know just you know, the project so the I'm not following you. So the, the well, additional so the, the so the, the additional sidewalk from the post office to the library is like sixty grand. Okay. So So that's hundred and forty. So you still got another hundred and thirty thousand dollars that you didn't have prior. Okay. So no, again, I'm saying, I, I, I'm, I'm there's green. some I'm comfort green, level but, there. But it's not total it's not just 275, uh, 75 for project and management and for engineering. And now we have 200 left, but we really don't have 200 left. So we we'll do what, what we wrote the grant for. We do. So the only thing that is new to us as far as these expenses mm -hmm. is the municipal project management and the additional sidewalk work, the right. 50 grand. So it's 90 grand out of $260,000. Mm -hmm. So the remaining amount you have to cover expenses that we would have had to pay for. Okay. So what if this what if this utility work gets approved? Then So then that's all additional money. That's all. So then I would completely bag the capital project fund and just bond the entire okay. project. Okay. And you still have grant money and um, a hundred thousand dollars for Queechy Road from the state of Vermont yeah. that you have to put towards this. Um, so again, you've got X amount of money. I, I just said I would, you know, again, I'm pulling this math completely off the top of my head, but it was a hundred thousand, you know, a million dollar project. Yeah. 
was to say you got $200,000 grant money in the air, I'm just going to pull out a number at 800000 you're going to have to bond for. Okay. And then how, and what were you thinking, 10 or 20 years? I don't, th I personally would go, I'd have to look at it, but I think that I wouldn't go 30. I think that 20 is a fairly reasonable number. Oh, 10's not? It's a little tight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I do remember that just in, was it last year, we didn't have enough money to finish the roof for the library, and so that our capital budget is rather tight. And you mentioned there was that four letter HVAC that's just looming out there for the library uh, that's going mm. to be a big. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, have Peter Fellows be the municipal project manager for the bike bed grant. I'll, Go ahead. I'll second the motion. further discussion, do we? No. Uh, I'm for it. good with that. Okay. He's nodding yes, yes. No. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. It's still okay. coming up in, the, in, his, in his minutes. So that's it. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. <coughs> well, you can see this intersection thing. Dragging on. But you just took a step. Yes, sir. Oh, it's just, it's just tiny. Wind out of my sails. Baby steps. Just. Baby steps. Ron says it's Christmas. Ron says it's Christmas. Okay. Um, you want to talk about the old budget or the new budget? <coughs> we got old budget stuff here, right? This year's current budget. Let's talk about the current budget. So the current budget, uh, this is through November, uh, so that's five months through, uh, or 41.66% of the expenses um, year to date. Uh, we are essentially on track, um, kind of across the board. Um, Again, I will just, uh, from an overall perspective, uh, because we have paid um, most of the assessment category um, and over half of the appropriations, uh, if I back that out and just stick with the, you know, essentially the operations, um, I come up with a number, uh, we are about 40.22%. Um, expensed uh, and again after five months that would be 41.66 or pretty pretty well on target um, I'll just kind of point out there's just a couple of things that um, stick out um, Martin Memorial building we had difficulties with the heater um, we had to go in and kind of re, re gig a couple things um, so we are over <coughs> on repairs in the Mark Memorial Building. Um, this is showing an expense of seventeen hundred. Um, seventeen hundred doesn't ring a bell, um, so I have to look into that. Um, but um, I do know that we had to have Irving come in and um, um, spend some time with that. Evan was involved in that as well. Um, The old home day expenses, uh, it shows 12034 um, It's not actually that much. It's more like $6,500. Um, there is an adjustment there, but it doesn't pop up until December's financial statements. Um, so just know that um, we haven't gone out and overspent that yet. Um, um, but um, we have uh, essentially purchased the fireworks or have put in our payment. <laughs> for that, uh, we do that early. We get a percentage discount on that for doing it early. Um, and I would just point out to you also um, the thing that I found a little bit interesting um, is 
Um, in the rec center, at first it threw me for a little bit of a loop. Uh, the teen adventure payroll and the programs, um, you know, were upwards to 60, 70 percent expensed. And meanwhile, on the revenue side, uh, we're only at about 45 percent um, of the revenue in. But again, a lot of people kind of pre-register for that in June, leading into the summertime. Uh, meanwhile, most of the programs happen in the summertime, so you'll see that um, a lot of the expenses have occurred, but the uh, revenue is lagging there. Um, and same thing, uh, you'll see that the summer um, camp payroll and the camp programs um, are mostly expensed. Again, that's because it runs from July um, to the end of August. So that is essentially has occurred for this fiscal year, um, and that drives the recreation percentage spent, which is 43.84%. It drives it up a bit, um, but certainly it goes to show that um, a lot of their expenses kind of happen up front in the summertime. <coughs> and then the revenue comes in uh, more towards May and June as kind of people pre-register for that. Uh, highway, we are essentially um, a little bit below, actually. Uh, I backed out the paving because we did the paving in the last fiscal year, so it kind of is skewed. Um, that revenue uh, or that expense um, went to last fiscal year, so um, it'll kind of flesh itself out um, at the end of this fiscal year. It'll kind of even itself. The two years will kind of even itself out. So if I simply take the pavement section out of this, again, kind of like the general fund and the assessments, if I take the paving section out, leaving me with the operations for everything else, uh, we are essentially, for summer and winter combined, we're essentially at about 34.5% expensed. Uh, although I will notice a uh, note that, um, you know, so far, I need to knock on some wood, uh, the salt expenses, um, a little bit below, and uh, some of our other expenses are running a little bit below, but um, certainly that could change in a hurry as we get through the holidays and into January. I got a question or two. Yep. So, <coughs> on the, the general fund, are, are we doing all the janitorial services in house now? Nope, the library is still done by um, their own folks. So that's that's in the general fund and not in the library? Correct. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so what, why, why don't we clean the library? I think there's a little history here that predates me. Uh, if somebody else wants to venture in, I think the library came and did a little presentation to the board and, and there was some discussion there. Um, the library kind of went their own way. Um, they weren't happy with what we were providing them. Um, so they brought them on, but. Um, so really the Jan $4,500 is all the library then for the cleaning? Uh, well, we went through on most of, seven. we also went through July with uh, oh, Chris cool. until we hired Evan on. Um, so I don't think that the 4,500 would um, completely cover. Uh, what page are you on, Matt? Uh, page seven. Uh, so the 4,500, Matt, is what's budgeted. Um, what's spent to date is 2,150. Uh, I want to say that um, maybe 1500 of that, I think, I'm trying to think of it's about 300 a month for the library. Um, we're about five months through, so maybe 1500 of that is the library and maybe 1000 us. So that would maybe, 1000 seems a little high for a month to Chris, but um, that would kind of round out the two. So the, 20, the 2150 would be what we've expensed to date for the five months. You know, I think I, it's been a while since um, we budgeted that, but I think I thought that there would be some overlap there, which we did have in Jul January, July. 
and I think the remaining amount of that would probably be for, for the library person. So it would be, I want us to stick with the three, might be a little bit more than that, but let's just say that would be 3,000, 3,600 for the library. I mean, just in general, the, the library budget's got a big increase, and there's money right there that does not have to be part of the budget. I've mentioned it before, but. But what, what is the history? I mean, do you guys. I mean, I mean th things change. I don't care if someone separate's been cleaning that for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just trying to establish what was the difference that they asked to be to break away. Was it simply the quality of the I, service? I believe that's the case. But yeah. I mean, yeah. something. I mean, we can get someone in here to clean it for twenty thousand, and I'm sure they do a great job. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting that whoever cleans Damon Hall should also clean the I library. Would, I would think we've got a paid employee to do it. It makes more sense to to try to do as much as we can without hiring someone outside to do it. Is, is that a possibility? Or? Uh, this came up last year, if I recall, um, right about the, might have been about the same meeting as last year. Um, and I think that my answer then, I think would still hold true now, uh, is that um, the position is fairly well-rounded. It's both cleaning and maintenance. Um, it's all the buildings. Um, I felt comfortable. I've had some discussions with the library. There's some openness to them, but it's not 100%. It's not a done deal that their board would be willing to forego the person that they've got there. Um, so there is a question mark as to the cooperation from the library to do that, but there's some openness with the library. I felt as though, based upon the workload and the things that needed to be done in town and to the buildings, that um, that seems to be working and not to, you know, I, I didn't feel the need to rush out and put that on Evan's plate. I think I feel somewhat there at the moment. Um, six months from now, I may feel differently, but I think that. Um, well, we should take the cleaning number out of the buildings and grounds and put it in the library budget then. Again, I'm going to have to go to history on this. Um, I think that there's some history here as to where that goes and the responsibilities of the town versus the library, library's operations, town's building. Um, it seems like we're responsible for paying for it, but we don't get any say in how things get done. It seems like a raw deal to me. That's kind of how it is, I think. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Well, but if the agreement is, or it has always show been. Me the, show me an agreement. Uh, there is no agreement. They're about the town doing the building and they do the operations. There's no agreement. If that was always verbal. I'm, I'm asking. I mean, I as know. far as I know, it's verbal. Yeah. I mean, everything changes. Yeah. But I don't want to get I guess bogged it's down. Library trustees. To they're, they're electing, right? Yeah. But should the library yes. of trustees, library's trustees, uh, fix the roof? Yeah, it's the operations, operations of the building, they do, and so they probably feel cleaning is part of that. Part part of the operational. Yeah, use of I think that's kind of how it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they do come in here and talk to us sometimes. You could bring that up. I think it's pretty simple compromise, and I don't know why they why they wouldn't just say yes. That's a good place to save money, and we we should do that. And and we could save money if if um, the position that person that does the cleaning well, here. That's just, an, it's just a thought. I don't want to get bogged down on it. So we can continue. Um, 
on, okay. on, Dave, on page one, there's uh, a budget of, for fleet and liability insurance. Yep. And we, what is that? They were just here. That is that. We haven't gotten a bill yet. Is that what it is? Uh, correct. Okay. Yep. So I'm confused by the numbers though, because they're talking, we're talking now 70 something and this is 38. So it's split by the department. Okay. So you'll see the general fund has a um, portion and um, highway has a portion. Okay. Uh, I can't remember if there's some, a portion of the library fund uh, as well. Um, Actually, the library is actually part of the general fund. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, maybe split out, but it's certainly split between the general fund and okay. the highway fund. But the key is, is that we haven't, we, we will pay this before July. You, uh, yeah, unfortunately we will, yes. Shucks. Okay. <coughs> It'll actually be coming up fairly soon. I think we may pay it again in maybe January. Uh, and then they come and they essentially will do an audit of our payroll. Um, and if we've been good from a workers' comp or mm. from certain, we can get money back. Where, where does their, um, I forget the nuanced name, the rebate or the money that we get back, where does that show up? Um, does it offset? In this case, it was essentially a credit to the contribution. Okay. So they're saying, I don't have it here, but uh, here it's essentially. So that's how it's managed. It's never, we never receive it. It's just uh, they, if you add everything up and then they've got a credit contribution credit giving an actual 2020 total contribution. Okay. So they, they are, they've kind of factored in there. Nobody ever gives you cash back. You know, <laughs> they got the money, they're going to keep yeah, it. I was going to spend it on something else. So. <laughs> I know, I know, that's where you're going. This is a better way to do it. Cash is I think it's time for a cookie. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cookie break. Would you like a cookie? I just did the social. Yeah. Well, could you pass the platter, please? Too lazy to walk around. Yes, I am. Thank you. Martha, thank you very much, Martha. Martha. Not Dave, the pretender. I'm going to pass this It's really good. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, oh that's so nice. Oh, that's very nice. You're in the Christmas mood. Now I can't have a second one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to have a cookie sale to sell them. And get them. <laughs> oh, you're really I'm looking for the cash. I know you are. Oh, my God. Does the eggnog come from that? Thank you. Okay. Are we good with this? Anything more? No. Thing? So you've got some cleanup from last week, but I'll <coughs> let me go over some other things first. <coughs> I'll hand this out. So two things. So one, you just heard that um, the amount that we are, so this, uh, when he sent this to me, um, we went through it and indeed the numbers are lower. Um, they're even lower than 
not only are they lower from last year, but they're lower, even lower from what we budgeted because we were expecting kind of an, an upward trend. So again, Phil, on the, on the concept that part of this is in the high general fund, part of this is in the highway fund, um, under the subtract part, you see workers' comp and fleet liability insurance. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> essentially, <coughs> the actual numbers versus the budgeted numbers uh, in the general fund is $8,499 or less. Uh, and in the highway fund, it's $8,125 or less, so essentially $16,600 and something. Um, what the what is actually going to cost us compared to what I had was budgeting for next fiscal year. So here we get into some of that. A lot of a lot of times we are projecting, and in this case it came in less than what we were projecting. Um, and then what I also did is I upped um, another fifteen hundred dollars for the essentially the athletic director the school reimbursement to the town. Last year it was $21,000. This is essentially for the assistant director who works almost directly for the school. Um, it was a little, I didn't really get a whole lot of history, historically, what the contribution should be, what it was agreed upon or whatever, other than back when we were establishing the rec center, the school said that they would kind of go in on some of this. Uh, so when, this is the third budget that I've done. The first budget I did, I upped that reimbursement by 1500 Last year it was about 2500 This year again, I upped it about 1500 But if you recall, um, the rec center, I also upped uh, John's salary um, a little bit, yeah, about a little over four grand, and um, Jack's salary about two grand. Um, so this is kind of a bump to coincide with that. Now, this is room we need to make over the next couple of years. Um, you know, that amount pays for half of his wage, doesn't pick up any of the benefits. Um, so I'm going to have to have a conversation with them, but I'm sure that conversation will probably involve police services and fact that they're paying for police services and we're paying for school athletic or they're paying for athletic director and and or we're you know take your pick but um, you know that discussion will be somewhat interesting but um, the, the there's really no rhyme or reason is that a reimbursement that they give us is all I guess is what I'm saying and um, I'm just slowly upping it without any real pushback um, eventually I'm gonna need to sit down in the school and say you know Jack essentially is a full-time Kind of person over there. He does after school and summer programs and all of our, our ski runners and stuff like that. He's very active and, and an assistant to John. But we spend a lot of time in the school. So we'll need to kind of, I'm just throwing that out there. If anybody has a whole lot of history on that, let me know. But um, it seems to me that, um, you know, along with maybe, you know, the library discussion, but uh, this one is, is sticks out at me as being a little bit more um, both elusive and needing to be kind of updated. So that being said, I had, so the 16600 that comes down on the um, insurance, I have offset if you recall last meeting, um, there is the Mace Hill cover and the local share that we need to cover. There was some discussion as to how we would cover that. Um, I have taken that 16,600 and applied it to the local share of the Mace Hill cover. <coughs> I also did a little bit of research. I was kind of going from memory and again, um, almost like the the three corners intersection project going off the top of my head doesn't always work, but um, the local share is somewhat convoluted. Uh, Mary, you may know a little bit of this um, due to your experience over at the um, um, Planning Commission, but um, it's essentially a, it's called ERAF, um, and it is dependent on how much we pay, how much we pay 
um, in a FEMA event is dependent on several factors. Um, so the first factor is um, if we don't have anything, um, we essentially pay 17.5% or would have to pay 17.5% um, of the local share um, for a FEMA-related event. Now, we have several things that we do. We have a floodplain bylaw, which is one thing that we need. We need a local hazard mitigation plan, which I'm going to talk about the town manager update. We need a local operations plan. And there was one other thing out there. I can't remember what it is, but there's four things. Um, if you have those four things in place, your local match goes from 17.5% to 12.5%. We have those four things. Our share is 12.5%. If you have river corridor language in your zoning bylaws, um, it brings it down to 7.5%. We don't have zoning, and we hence don't have river corridor language. The river corridor language is more stringent than the floodplain bylaws or the 100 plain, 100 year flood. River corridor is you get into the whole meandering, and um, essentially a river corridor is wider than a 100 year flood line, but is certainly what the state saw during Hurricane Irene and some post events. So, um, that's why they is kind of a carrot and a stick. If you put this into place, when you have a FEMA event, we give you know you pay less of the share. So we're at the twelve and a half percent. Last meeting, I think we said we're at seven and a half percent. So twelve and a half percent of a two hundred fifty thousand dollar project is about thirty two thousand um, dollars. So I have inserted sixteen thousand six hundred. Uh, I am very reluctant to go any higher on this budget. Um, so it comes back to the remainder would be picked up with the surplus monies or the fact that we maybe just run a surplus in the budget. Um, at the moment, I'm not looking to pick up the other half of that. There is room there with some surplus money, but certainly took the savings from the insurance and applied it to um, the Mays Hill project as far as what we will need to pay out as a local share. So we can't, even though we don't have zoning, yep. we can't put river corridor language in our town plan? Uh, nope, there's no way to enforce that to my knowledge. It would have to be somehow stuck into the floodplain bylaws, perhaps. Um, that would be a two rivers on a Quichi discussion. Um, but certainly, you would then be broaching upon enforcement and, you know, um, which we've been talking about. But, um, you know, this is wider than the floodplains, and it is a little bit more restrictive in that. Um, renovations and new building um, certainly would probably be prohibited. Because that's a big, I mean, a 5% drop. Yep, 7.5% actually. Well, but to go from 12 and a half to 7 and a half, right? Oh, okay, yep, I'm sorry. I did the math wrong. Oh. You were right. No. So. Same thing going from seven and a half to twelve and a half. So yeah, I drop it by the five. <coughs> but there's no, I, we just. You got to put it in. Yeah, you got to. Um, we've done what we can minus that mechanism. So you're adding the sixteen. Sixteen five. So I put sixteen five to um, add, add to the budget. Yep. So you'll see that under adds under storm damage, I added sixteen thousand five hundred mm -hmm. um, to that. When when uh, might this happen? Uh, again, part of the um, manager's update, um, the schedule, um, and that, that's. You know, as in any project, we'll have to see how it goes. We put the uh, engineering out to bid. We got the four bid responses back. Um, we need to try and come up with a, a winning proposal by the end of the month and award it for early January. They have until 
<coughs> I can't remember if it's April or May. I think it's April 15th or thereabouts to get the proposal um, to have the design and the specs back to us, and then we would turn around and put it out to bid. And um, you can't do the work until after July. I think it's like mid-July, um, you know, between about the second week in July to October to do the work. Um, so the plan would be to try and do it at that point. And I noticed you put some uh, Jersey barriers there. Yep. So that's going to work for the winter then. I think we're going to, um, if we can continue to get cooperation from the state, we're looking to close the, the culvert. Oh, you mean, oh, before? Yeah. You mean before. Now, why do you want to do that? Because it's crumbling. It's not safe, too. It's, nobody feels very warm and fuzzy about it. It's going to fall into the book. Maybe it'll freeze solid then. <laughs> <laughs> it's good thinking. <laughs> that is possible. Um, we're a few weeks beyond where we, you know, we would have liked to have closed this before Thanksgiving. Um, we are getting a um, fair amount of assistance from the state. They're hopefully going to do the Route 12 portion of the, the signage. <coughs> uh, the, the signs are actually at the sign shop. Um, we may actually be putting the posts up. Uh, while we got this little warm spell here um, in the next couple of days and just attach the posts and then we'll turn the Jersey barriers the other way since we close it off. Yeah. Huh. And the detour would be essentially to Bowers, Bowers to Route 12. Yeah, so we'll have people up there next to it. Okay. So this, you said the, the design would then have to be turned around, blah, blah, blah. So when would the work couldn't happen that quickly, could it? Because any firms, or would we be, we wouldn't be doing it, would we? We won't do it, no. So they would probably be all booked up by then. Well, yeah. it's possible. But, um, Somebody will know. <coughs> Yep. The state didn't seem overly concerned. It's not a huge project. Yeah. For the right person, it's not a huge project. And some of the big players submitted bids already for the engineering, so people are interested. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So they would also do, they're the same groups. I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> some are engineering firms. It strikes me kind of funny. I can imagine the size of this tube. And yeah, it's going to be, all the SWAT is going to be behind that house. <laughs> yeah, that's why. I, a couple of reasons why they felt that engineers needed to get involved with the yeah. design. Yeah. Um, having spent way too much time the last few months on roads, do, does the engineering study address the health of the aquatic system? Uh, but state mandates with uh, so Scott Jensen from Sensory uh, uh, Water Quality, he's a stream engineer, uh, stream operation engineer, um, is involved in this project. He actually has all four of the proposals. He will go through it. So here, we don't do much without them. Okay. Yeah. That that really isn't a cold. I mean, that's a stone. Yeah. Stone bridge. So it's it's. Uh, Wildlife friendly, yeah. anyways. Yeah. It's still, I assume it still will be. Um, so I just actually was in a huge victory, but the tax rate uh, overall went from 9.66 to 9.59. Um, that's where it stands now. Uh, and I did put minutes from 2012 in your packet. <laughs> do, do we note it? <laughs> I had to blow that off of the, blow the dust off of that, but uh, I think there was some discussion about that last week to be carried forward, possibly. <sighs> well, I have to ask Martha. Okay. 
that's the question. <laughs> oh, they're going to blow our budget. <laughs> Do we want to? Uh, we can stand together. And, uh, yeah. What are you talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? Well, this is how many? Oh, those You've done minutes. two years wrong. Is that right? Um. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. I'm not sure I did it wrong. I just think that uh, different. Without so, much guidance, I think we. I think we went with. It turned out wrong, but you. I think we went with what was. You took it. You shot it out. And all the income came in one tax year. Proceed from here on. Move forward. Okay. Mark and I are in agreement. We will move forward. We thank you. I'm sure Martin thinks there's a bad problem right there. <laughs> Is there some agreement as to what we're moving forward with? Well, we, we've already got. It. This is something we agreed on years ago. I don't know why we can't. So, do you want to start doing it again in July, or do you want to? Whatever you we could. got paid up to, we got paid. So that is. So there was some discussion between. So that is a per meeting amount, yeah. and I think there was some discussion as to just a blanket amount. <coughs> I would, I would suggest to base it on meetings, but not on the attendance. Does that make any sense? Say the first part. So you know the number for the year. The so that's the blanket amount. That's what you're talking yeah. about. Base, yep. it, base it on the meetings, okay. assuming everybody's always here. Yep. Yep. And not be a gun out of shape if somebody misses a meeting. I think you made a comment last time, Gordon, that, uh, you know, that there's no one taking advantage of this situation at all. No, I'm just going to start. I'm going to start, so I'm gonna start it. taking advantage of it. <laughs> Mary. Oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? I didn't mean to. Oops. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether this will fall. You, you thought it would fall within the budget, just about. Let's blow his budget right out of the water. <sighs> it doesn't quite come over there. Dave's going to be awake tonight worrying about this. Um, so I think the reason why we're discussing it again tonight was for clarification as so there were certain things tossed out last meeting and I said let's make a formal motion of this so if I get hit by a beer truck we don't then do it <laughs> <laughs> um, it is done it's not done as envisioned um, so I think that if it were to deviate from that we should probably put it in writing for those to follow um, in subsequent years. How's that? Mm -hmm. so do you understand what I'm, what I'm getting at? Um, so <laughs> I think what I'm hearing is that what you wanted to do is do $30. Let me see. Oh, right. no, I got it right here. I'm sorry is um, so for for the chair and the secretary be thirty six dollars um, a meeting so you've got you know thirty six times two two a month so if you went twenty four um, and then for the other folks it would be thirty do I have that correct is that what's yeah, we usually have a few more than 24 meetings, so about 
we might not if we could get on what we have done. But you guys used to take an entire summer off. No, guys, no, 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 that is not true. You guys had like Fourth of July, and then you get back together again until like Labor Day. You guys were like gone. Bob, Bob is still me yet. No, you said, you said, man, you'll love it because you don't work summer. Like, wow. like, how fun that? Bob is misremembering. <laughs> you have to work. You oh, have Bob to work who? harder. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work harder because we get the summer off, not you. Oh my goodness. We do not get the summer off. I think it was two meetings. That's right. We only have one meeting in July, one in August. You know what? I didn't like Norwich. They did that. I hated it because everything just snowballed. Like everything just gets put on the shelf, and then they 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 reconvened in like the last week in August. And it was like a six-hour meeting because you had like yeah. all these issues yeah. that were like, okay, you gotta. I think this year we were. Two meetings in July, two in August, I really? yeah. We didn't say no, no. by God, we were here. Yeah, and I think Gosh, we I wish I was here the old <laughs> day. <laughs> we surely have two extra meetings <laughs> next <laughs> year. Like we just had one. Yeah. We're probably going to have another one. So, but, yeah. Yeah. so again, I yeah. see I would have gone astray and we'd be right back at it next year. I would have done it wrong. So, is it a blanket amount or is it per meeting? All right, so how much do you have in the budget for us? We have four grand. Um, I think it's four. All right, so if I did my math right, we have we have 24, 24 meetings. Uh, three, uh, so let's see, that's at $30, that's 720 times three. I probably did this wrong. I got 2160 then for the two, I got 1728. So anyway, I got 3888. Three eight eight eight. <coughs> I don't know. Eight. If I, eight yeah. Eight. Three thousand. For twenty-four meetings. Yes. For thirty-six, thirty-six, thirty, thirty, thirty. Somebody else should do that. I'm not good at going math on it. Okay. Should you do it on based upon twenty-four meetings? Or yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, Gordon's a little slower than I am, so maybe he'll be right. <laughs> I'm off by so 26. So I'm uh, I come off sleepy. There you go. Confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah. Can we round? Can we do that half <coughs> again so we use all the four thousand? So thirty-six dollars and nine cents. What did you say, Sarah? That would leave room still in the budget at three eight 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 if there were an additional meeting. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't go over the four thousand. It's only that if four of them show up, though. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. You could save money now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Two absences during the course of the year yeah. you know, from an individual, you know, one meeting or another, it would all look just great. <laughs> I'll take the summer off. <laughs> Could you get Sarah? What's your bottom line? Yeah, it, was, it, would come, it comes over the four thousand. There are twenty-six meetings. I get forty-two twelve. Everybody's present for every single one. Right. Yeah. We're going to assume that. That's you what. You want to, so, so, so Dave has to find another couple hundred bucks. 212, yeah, 4212. 42, well, there goes our 9.5 number. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back, to the, we're back to the 42. I'm just going to keep it simple. 42. Okay. <laughs> but if we have a meeting on a Wednesday, then what happens? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. The last time I had to go on a, a hike on a back road, I, you know, I sprained my ankle. And, uh, uh, workers, comp. workers comp is all about. So did you get all that? Look at all those extra bins. Yeah, it's all the roads. Oh, yeah, it's way too I we were trying to. I thought we back to this. I thought we were going to streamline it, but. You want to go back to that? Well, I thought that's what the suggestion was to go back to this. There was, discrepancy, there was discrepancy last meeting as to what the, it just actually just, was. I don't think anybody wants to go through the hassle of counting 
the meaning, who went to what meeting in the book every every year. Right. Yeah, I agree. Do you think anybody yeah, does? I agree. No. I don't think that's a good use of Martin's time or whoever would do it, you know? Yeah. So it's just it's, I have like 26 meetings and use those numbers. Yeah. So 26 and you got 36 and 30. No. So even if we... Everybody gets 30 in these, these, the chair and the uh, yeah. secretary. So if, yeah. if there are 50 meetings, oh well. So it's just going to be a blanket amount based upon technically yeah. 26. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Dave, I don't know what that smirk is for, but I think it's at our expense. Next year, I'm going to have a little bonus line. It's going to say, it's going to say something. That's like, quite the threat, Dave. <laughs> well, I, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I slipped in 26, and you know, sometimes it's only 23. So it's not. It's 27. Yeah, we go to these these road things, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. I'm just. On you. Okay, so while I'm talking about this, I want to say the North Heartland School, before I forget, can we use that for additional office space? You're always, you know, yep. everybody's always in Bob, it was a, it was a concern of Bob's when he was town manager is there's not enough office space here. How about North Heartland School? So I've actually have thought about that, oh, okay. but it would be a matter of, okay, how do you divide that? Would it be like the Listers and the yeah. Listers are out there and yeah. then therefore you, you'll be in North Heartland for the Listers or, you know, I, I. And the town clerk actually works a lot with the Listers too, don't they? Yep. Yeah. So it, it gets oh, into really? a, mm. you know, I've talked, you know, I've thought about sending somebody something over to the rec center and that doesn't fit well with me. So. Mm. Um, although I did see your good friend Donna from CATV and Mike's the other day and reminded her of that conversation and she oh. very much wanted to look at it but then again I haven't heard from her in like oh. a week but uh, it oh. is the holidays. Hmm. Well would you like to have your office up here? <laughs> I will be. I think you're closer to home. Yeah. yeah so nobody will bother you up there. Nobody. Prove your I gotta go to work there. Uh, I was uh, 1.2. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to lift the water faucet up a little bit. Okay. Uh, that could be your summer, your summer uh, <coughs> office. <coughs> During July and August. Well, <laughs> while we're all away, you know, I'll just kind of work remotely. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay, well. Are we on your notes? Thank you. Yes. I lost track, actually. Yeah, if you've got any questions on the notes, go ahead. Must be the yeah. cookies. Um, I just am curious about the seven BCA appeals. Are they to the Superior Court or to the... None of them have been to the Superior Court. Okay. Let me, uh, let's, let's back up here for a second. Let's tackle this in a different... <laughs> So we've talked about uh, most of these, but I, I do want to kind of hammer out what we've got, um, particularly myself um, and Bill to a point on our plates uh, in December and going into January. Um, it, it certainly would kind of a little bit bottlenecked here. So we have the three corners intersection. I did meet with Green Mountain Power. Uh, myself and Dan Peck, uh, who is our engineer from VHB, met with Green Mountain Power. I think we've hammered out uh, the alternative design. For some reason, they were just stuck on getting that to the point where we needed to get them it to. Uh, so I hope to see that back again um, from them this week um, and hopefully get that out to the uh, other utilities to hone their cost estimates to kind of round that out so that we can get that to town meeting um, would be the optimal. Um, so that took place and we are, as, I, as we just took place uh, tonight uh, with the bike ped grant and the municipal project manager in naming one. Um, so there is work being done on that. At the same time, we have the Mace Hill culvert. The proposals are in, we got four, uh, one from Stantec, one from Pathways Consulting, 
one from Otter Creek, uh, Otter Creek Engineering, and one from Du Bois and King. Um, we need to turn around uh, and essentially notify um, or pick that uh, winning proposal by the end of the month if we're to stay on uh, target. Uh, I did ask Matt to participate. Uh, he's got copies of the um, proposals there in a ranking sheet um, to go along with myself and Bill. The state of Vermont is very much a player in that. Um, uh, Scott Jensen, Phil, as I mentioned, um, and uh, Gary Bump, uh, Chris Bump, I'm sorry, from District 4, uh, also has copies and has reviewed it. Uh, and is um, providing feedback, um, and those will weigh heavily uh, on us uh, as we move forward. Uh, we just um, uh, had a motion, and we're moving forward on the rec center steps. Um, so we were doing work on that um, and um, have been in contact with Dave Jocelyn. Um, we will kind of round the corner and look towards uh, communicating with him and, and um, finalizing that. We just talked about the local hazard mitigation plan as part of what we call that ERAF. Um, that needs to be updated. I need to, we do have a grant on that um, to do, um, cover most of that. As part of the grant, I need to get, um, since we follow the purchasing policy, it's under 10,000. Um, so I need to notify or get um, pricing from three. I kind of need to put together, they give me a template, I kind of need to put that together and send it out. Do I do have a name of three people uh, that the state of Vermont gave me, and then a fourth will again be Two Rivers out of uh, We'll receive one of those as well. Uh, they do do this for um, most of the towns, but again, um, you need to go through that formalized process. Okay, if I, um, I read that, read this today, and I realized, I Honestly, I don't understand what a local hazard is. Uh, basically, anything that um, can um, be damaged or be obstructive um, during a storm event. Okay. Um, so um, it's identifying those and um, essentially uh, how we're going to, uh, or just essentially a plan, identifying that it's there, mm -hmm. what we would or wouldn't do about it. Um, and, you know, kind of move forward from there. I think, Mary, you may have been involved in the last one. Uh, it was a group of, I saw some of the notes, I don't know, like maybe six to eight people involved. Yeah, there weren't that. many. Um, yeah. Putting that together, we'll do that uh, again. Um, uh, so those things, I mean, the Mace Hill and the local hazard mitigation plan is applying some um, pressure and anxiety. I'm just trying to turn that around uh, with the holidays uh, in here. Certainly with Christmas and New Year's on a Wednesday, kind of throws a monkey wrench in things here. Um, in addition to that, we'll be looking towards closing the Mace Hill culvert. Um, and um, that's kind of it, but I certainly wanted to put out those things. Mm -hmm. um, we are uh, beyond year three at this point. I'm also going to need to be looking at putting the uh, lawn mowing out. Um, the goal would be January. So um, that along with the um, town report, and um, if we do get the information back from the utilities, we need to put ourselves in place to do a bond vote, which would need to be an Australian ballot. There is specific steps for that, um, of which a public hearing is a part of that. Um, not greater than 10 days um, from the actual vote, so we would need to prepare for that as well. So um, potentially, obviously there's a lot going on, um, and um, there is kind of a sequence here, um, and um, we'll push forward and look to Get that, get through it. Okay. Getting back to the Mace Hill culvert, is the state showing an unusual interest in that project? Um, they, uh, yes and no. So um, I did reach out to them. Um, f I did reach out to them first. Um, for a template on an RFP, and certainly they need to do the uh, hydrology study. 
um, and the uh, feedback was um, certainly was that um, you know originally the thought was maybe just a design build on that, but certainly after some looking at the complexities of it, um, a engineering um, proposal was deemed to be best. <coughs> but certainly they have an interest um, based upon how that's going to slope into Route 12. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be a higher structure than what we've got there now. So it obviously needs to flow into Route 12 and, um, and offer Route 12. Um, so for various reasons, including some of their drainage that's involved in that intersection, um, they do have a concern. But um, they've also been, due to the FEMA event and Vermont Emergency Management, there's several structures, ours, I'm trying to think who else, uh, might have been Bethel in one other town that were hit with some damage such as this and they've lent assistance to the three Do towns. the uh, Butters have a, um, um, what do you call it, um, party status? Uh, nope. Because um, what I'm thinking of is uh, the house, the next house along Sylvia's. Yep. Sylvia Heath, and she has been, she's had an ongoing concern for years that the road keeps getting higher in front of her house. If the culvert goes up, the road's going to go up too. Yep. Um, That'll need to be taken into consideration, but all the work will need to be done in the right of way, and they'll, um, which kind of takes that off of their plate. But um, yeah, I understand that. Um, so her input is almost every time we're there. Yeah, um, sure. She makes her way out. Um, I've seen the windows, I've seen the driveway, I've seen just about everything else. Uh, on the flip side, she her very much also had concerns about the, the structure itself. So the, a part of her should also be happy yeah. that um, oh. both the structure and the um, runway between the structure and the canal there um, will be enhanced. The, the other the other concern I have is that the. We have these signs up front here that says detour and don't use this road because the bridge is no good. Uh, that, once we get that culvert fixed and we have a detour around that bridge, in Foundryville, Foundryville Bridge. Um, I'm, 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 I lost you, I'm sorry. Two things. One, I think they used it as a <clears throat> um, in the past um, to bypass that bridge, but I'm not entirely sure anybody detours that bridge uh, or well, that structure apparently there. They don't on Route 12. They don't. But what if they should enforce that? And then the only way around that bridge is either uh, many, creature, uh, many miles or Dallas Road. So. Well, actually, the the overweight permit, we can post that road. It, that's initially part of the reason why you, you, it's posted now. So we, it's the town the has a right to keep trucks off that road, as far as a uh, direct route travel. Okay. And that's the way it's posted now. So when you get your overweight permit, it says on that road, not to you, that that. that that that's posted for heavy trucks. Okay, so we should be safe. I just, just, just don't want to see a lot of traffic change. <laughs> okay. So as far as the size goes, we have we have almost no say. I mean, it, it's oh, I the hydrology study will basically <coughs> outlines the size of the the structure, and, and that's kind of what they live by. <laughs> However, the complexity here is, is that there's an understanding amongst the parties that, and I think I originally said seven, I think it's a 10 foot wide structure of what the hydrology study asked for. Um, and then there's a wide recognition that we're not going to be able to get a 10 foot wide structure there, no matter how bad they wanted it. So um, the RFP was written that it needs to be as large as it can be towards the 10 foot 
taking in the constrictions and considerations that yeah. we're not going to get to 10 feet. I don't know what the uh, constraints are. What, what is it that's... Well, one, the canal coming out of the back is, and two, you probably, I mean, the height, it can only be, I mean, you, you can't, coming right off Route 12, <coughs> it's an issue. Yeah. <coughs> so I, I hate to see them go up any higher. I think that's really a bad thing. I hope they can keep it down. Yeah. Um, the BCA appeals, are they going to cost us lit any litigation funds or are they all going to be at this point um, with the state appraiser? So the PBNR uh, still can cost us money. Um, okay. What do we bring in? We bring, we bring Ted Nelson back um, to defend his values um, or um, what do we have a lawyer to sit in? Mm -hmm. um, there is a possibility of, of uh, expenditures um, depending on each right. one. I think there's a couple of them that we feel as though right. are probably small enough um, that, you know, I, I think that just Doug sitting in, I think that there's some that are complex enough or there is a lawyer, lawyer involved on the other side that um, in, in more than one case um, mm -hmm. that we would probably want to analyze that. And, okay. Act properly. Is there a, a time limit for the, the, those appeals? Uh, the time limit that uh, they needed, <coughs> excuse me, that they needed to appeal by. Um, once it's appealed, it's kind of at the, at the, at the pleasure of those hearing the cases. So it's the property valuation. What was, what property valuation that? review, I think. PBNR. I think. I mean, certainly better than, you know, all seven going to Superior Court. Yeah. Um, Good. And just to be clear on the contract with the appraisal company it was through um, the BCA so for him to come back would be we would need to pay for him to come back um, thank you for the list of um, agencies hopefully it was helpful yep um, staff took that on uh, Martin and Allison Martin took the went ahead and put that together yeah, very nice I think I'm down to five that I yeah, don't know what they did for yeah. I wish they would come in and um, give a little talk about their program feature now. There it is. Anything else? Anything out there? Please say no. <laughs> no. Um, we need a moderator. Oh. We don't have a moderator. All right, town oh, meeting. Or know. school meeting. Oh. Who, uh, who was interested? Do you remember? Only, only one I remember is uh, um, Jennifer. Peter Peterson. Remember those? Um, um, He's got a woman voice. Rob Anderick's wife. Oh. oh, oh. What's her background? I, mean, she, I don't know. Well, she just expressed interest. She's expressed interest. And I asked her about it again, and she said she didn't think about it. I haven't heard from her. She's thinking quietly. So we need. We would need someone else in place March, whatever it's going to be. Yeah, and then this came in the mail. This is from Joe. Yeah, so about that. training. And if we did have a candidate, they need, we need, we should, we should know about it right away so they could. And what's the date of this?
tune up. What? That's February five. You have? Um, Did you get that contact? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are we adjourned? Right. Yeah. We adjourned. It's good with me. It's good with me too. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Like today, I hit it like three times. Yeah. Oh boy, that's.